Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating weighted averages using Excel. So I have here a fictitious data representing an ID variable that has 20 participants and corresponding scores in different areas of counseling education. We have career, family, individual, and group counseling scores. And let's assume these are final exam scores from these corresponding courses. And say there was a need to select a certain number of students, less than the number 20, for a project that involved using these skills. So it would be logical at this point to take the average of these scores, all the averages, and then look at which participants had the highest scores. So this would be an unweighted average. And in Excel, that's fairly straightforward. The function is average. And in this case, we want to average career, family, individual, and group counseling scores. So we can see we have an average of 84.25 for the first participant. And if we autofill that down, you can see here the average scores for all the participants. What if we had a situation, however, where we wanted to weight one or more of these skills differently than the others? So this unweighted average assumes that the weights for career, family, individual, and group are identical. So it's equivalent to the sum of these scores divided by the number of scores, in this case, four. But with a weighted average, you can select one or more of these variables and assign a weight to it. And the weighted average calculation will take that into account to provide you a correct weighted average based on the weights you provided. And the formula for this is fairly long, but it's not actually complex. It really only has two parts. So let me start here, equal sign, and I'm going to start with double open parentheses. And first we want to take the first score and shift 8 for the asterisk and multiply it by the weight that you want assigned to that score. In this case, the, the variable is career counseling. So we look over here at the career counseling weight. And since I've set it up this way, where I just have the weights presented once instead of all the way down the column, you're going to hit F4 to make that an absolute reference. So B2 times K2. And then we want to add family counseling times the weight for family counseling. Again, absolute reference for the weight. And then we want to add the individual counseling scores times that corresponding weight. And then we're going to add the group counseling times the group counseling weight. And then double parentheses here, close that off, and then we're going to divide by the sum of all the weights. So just in this case, K2 through K5, close the parentheses. Before we leave this, we want to make sure we set this denominator as an absolute reference as well, K2 through K5. This way we can autofill. So we can see we have the weighted average is equal to the average because all the weights are the same. So if I autofill this down, I'll now get the weighted averages for all 20 participants. And let me show you, if you change all the weights to say 2, notice that again, the weighted average is the same because all the weights are identical. It's when the weights are not identical, you'll see a difference between the weighted average and the unweighted average. So let's reset these all down to one again. And let's say the particular project involves career counseling. In this particular case, the career counseling component is extremely important. So we weight it as a three. So its weight 
is the same as all the other weights combined. So if we look to a participant that had a high career counseling score, we could see that 1019 and 1020 had a score of 96 for career counseling. It's no surprise that their weighted average is now higher than their average in both instances. And similarly, if we look to a participant that had a low score for career counseling, it's no surprise that the weighted average is less than the average for them. Now you don't have to weight just one dimension. Now you can reset these all to one. And you could take a look and say, well, this particular position, particular project, is going to be working with groups of people. So let's say we want to emphasize group skills. But family counseling also involves working with groups, so we put a little more emphasis on that. So this is double weighted, and this is triple weighted. But individual and career will leave it one. And in this instance, again, you would expect those with high group and family scores to have a higher weighted average. And a good example would be here, where you have a group counseling score of 96. You can see the weighted average increased over the average. And in an instance, as in participant 1009, family and group were the lowest two scores, and the weighted average dropped. So as you can see, the weighted average has a practical application in actually a wide variety of areas, not just in this one example. But just to review the calculation for this, which I have here in the formula bar, is taking the score and multiplying it by the weight. You do that for all of the variables and you add them together. So each, each score multiplied by its weight adds to the next score multiplied by its weight. And that whole value divided by the sum of all the weights. I hope you found this video on calculating weighted averages in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.